perfect. What is going on guys? Welcome to the Jaff Man. I'm your host, Jaff. Age old question, is it time to upgrade your smartphone? Is it old enough? Is it slow enough? Is it worth upgrading? And if it is, what are you gonna get? Really depends on your price point, your budget, and what you've got to work with. I was a Note 8 user from the day of launch, and I skipped the Note 9 because if you already had a Note 8, there wasn't the biggest of difference, although it was a better phone. Granted. Now, the Note 8 is gonna lose official first party support from Samsung. This is when this bad boy comes in, the Note 10 Plus. There are better phones, there are more exciting phones, but these two are of the same family, two generations apart, two year upgrade cycle for most people. Let's see what you can expect as an upgrade. So this is the Note 10 Plus. I've made a review of this, the link is up there, and this is my trusty Note 8. They have changed quite a bit in these last two generations. Not only are we getting a massive screen to body ratio compared to before, not that the old one was bad. We've lost the face projection sensor at the front. The edge to edge display is a lot more immersive. The display itself is a lot more better quality somehow. The dynamic range, the pixels have changed. The technology used has improved. The resolution remains the same at 1440p. The camera layout has changed as well as inheriting two extra cameras. Fingerprint sensor location has changed and we've lost a headphone jack. Obviously the horsepower is very different. We'll go into that in a moment. Now, what I like to do at the beginning of any sort of benchmark is clear everything and optimize using this built-in app. So they both basically should be saying 100% before we move on. Now the Note 8 is already ready and now with some editing, they're both ready. What I noticed though is on the Note 10, even though you have 12 gigs RAM, which is double what we used to have, it seems to use more just because it has more. I really don't know what a lot of this RAM in the doing is doing rather in the background. And this is a little boot test. Now we can see the Note 10 Plus seems to be little bit behind somehow at this stage. I mean, it's a bit confusing, but we've got a few more seconds to figure out what actually comes to the home screen. And here we are, the obvious winner, the Note 10 Plus. Such a newer phone, two years, but it was only different by like three seconds. So now we will load some commonly used apps, the phone, the messages, as you can see, they're both within milliseconds of each other. Although it does appear everything is loading faster on the Note 10. It's not a game changer. I mean, one second, it's not even a second. It's like half a second, if not less. Oh, what am I been looking at on each phone? I've been looking at E46M3 on the left phone and the ROG Phone 2 on the right phone. Interesting, even this surprises me. Now, what we will do here is look at the music app and somehow the old phone loaded quicker because modern phones have been overkill, overpowered for the last few years, especially of the tasks that we demand of them. Things like listening to music, browsing the web, playing some Candy Crush. I mean, not many people play serious games like PUBG and all this sort of stuff on phones. It might be a growing market. It might be something that takes over in the future. But at this stage, for the majority of us, we play stupid little games that don't need all this crazy horsepower. What we do need is to see how these new processors and this horsepower can give us better battery life and conserve energy so that they can run for longer. You can see on the left, we have the Exynos 9825 and on the right, we have the 8895. The Note 10 Plus, of course, comes with 12 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and the Note 8 comes with six gigabytes of DDR I don't know RAM, but it's plenty and it's enough fast. Crazily enough, it is more than enough for most smartphone applications. And I don't really see what the need of 12 gig is and how my Note 10 Plus manages to use eight, nine gigabytes of RAM doing what in the background? This Samsung One UI, as better as it is now than it ever used to be, must be using way too much applications, way too much background computing. I don't know, maybe government surveillance. Who knows? But it's using way too much RAM for no reason. And a common thing is because of phone system caching and how it works, once you've loaded one app once, the second time it's basically identical on both, which means that 
you might wait a millisecond or two on the first goal, but on the second goal, they both load instantly. I mean, it's like <laughs> the snap of a finger. Moving on to cameras, we do benefit from the extra wide camera. They're both 12 megapixels and we have reasons to believe that both 12 megapixel main sensors are exactly the same on both phones and maybe it's been the same since the S7 Edge. This is what I've read in other places and all that has changed is the processing power has allowed for better rendering and you know, computer science is being used to basically make these pictures and photos look better. Nevertheless, better is better and we are happy with better. They both have a two times telephoto lens. Also, the Note 8 looks a lot more zoomed in probably because of the crop factor form I'm using. Now the Note 10 Plus has this ultra wide mode, which does offer you a massive amount of distortion at the edge of the frame. But I think if you take the picture and you look at it after, there's a lot of a computer, how can I say? There's a lot of computer aided straightening of these distortion lines. So everything looks good. The Note 8 camera is bugging out right now. It's trying to track something that doesn't exist. And probably because it's just getting old, I don't really know what on earth it's doing. Maybe it needs a fresh install of the OS and this would sort it out. But on the same note, the fact that I've never had to reset this phone to reinstall the OS in the two plus years of ownership goes a long way to show how much Android phones have improved. I know everybody loves Apple phones for these simplicity reasons. You probably never had to do it in the life of an Apple phone, but it used to be a problem on Androids, especially back in the days of Android 4, 5, 6. Moving on to the selfie cameras, they both have similar fields of view, as you'll see after I change this perspective on the Note 8. But the Note 10 Plus pretends to have two different modes. It really has one mode. If you look on the screen there, it's got like these two human images, one's the one it's on now, and then one on the left, which is meant to be a bit wider. The true focal length is the one on the left, and the one on the right is just an illusion some bit of fakery gimmickry to make you think like it's got an extra wide mode or somehow it adapts, it doesn't, it's just a sensor crop. Nevertheless, it is a tad wider than the one you get on the Note 8. And you know what? Kudos to the Note 8 for being a two year old phone that still competes in this regard. Let's be honest here. If you look on eBay, you can pick up the Note 8 in mint condition for like 250 to 300 pounds. And the Note 10 Plus is going for roughly 800 pounds on eBay and a thousand pounds from Samsung. Now for a phone that's basically one quarter of the price, oh my God, it is punching way above its weight. You can get a lot of Chinese cheap phones. You can get all these budget phones that feature rich and but why would you want to? I mean, a lot of these have Chinese ROMs. You, you try to use a banking app, it doesn't work. And if you flash the global ROM via the manufacturer's website or download it yourself, then again, you won't get over the air updates. Now, these things are annoying problems you shouldn't have to deal with. They will have less than ideal, how can I say, hardware components than compared to a generation old or two generation old flagship such as the Note 8, especially when you can pick it up at the price point that you can. So the photo quality on both is somewhat similar, but it's definitely improved on the Note 10 Plus. Not night and day, but definitely an improvement. The extra wide camera is something that I am really happy about. This is something I found surprising. I was downloading Antutu, the 3D benchmarking tool, and the network speed or the Wi-Fi speed on the Note 10 Plus was blisteringly fast compared to that of the Note 8. Whatever new modem they're using somehow is like three to four times faster than the one on the Note 8, especially in this download example. I mean, this file size is 156 meg. It shouldn't really be taking this long, but for somehow, maybe it's not the download speed, but rather the fact that we benefit from UFS 3.0 storage, which has so much more bandwidth than the UFS 2.0, 
in Dino A. So Antutu basically is a mix of CPU and GPU and RAM tests. It's an all-round test. Now before I show you the results, I just thought I'd show you some of the rankings on the application as it is. The number one phone, the fastest phone in the world is the ROG Phone 2. And this version of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus comes in at number 10. The Snapdragon version comes in at number seven. So not too shabby still a flagship i mean i don't know where the note 8 would scale right now i reckon it's somewhere like 30th however what i am going to show you now is obviously how the scores differ 35,000, no 350,686 compared to 186,604 that's basically double the points what does this all mean means nothing if I'm honest, it means nothing. This is no high-end desktop computer. I mean, it's still some sort of kudos points. You have a fast phone, but in the real world, unless you're taxing the system to take advantage of this extra horsepower, which many of us aren't, then it means nothing. For the apps that I showed you, your little banking apps, little YouTube, little Candy Crush, all your communication apps, Facebook, WhatsApp, even an older phone would be just fine. S7 Edge maybe even. So I ran 3D Mark, which is basically a more graphics orientated benchmark. And if there was games out there that could, you know, really tax these phones, then this does mean something and you'd get a lot more stable frames per second. The Note 10 Plus can probably run anything, but I don't think the Note 8 at this stage with the games on the market would struggle either. So with all this said, both phones are really great. I would hands down say, if you're gonna get a budget phone, just get something like this in mint condition. Probably can get it for something like 250 pounds. I've showed you some sites already. This, forget RRP, forget what the manufacturers tell you. Buy it either direct from Samsung on an upgrade package or a PayPal pay monthly package, or buy it from eBay, because I've seen tons of sellers sell this phone for roughly 800 pounds. And if you sign up for PayPal credit, you get 24 months interest free, anything over hundred pounds. So you're able to save on a phone carrier package with your provider, and you have that flexibility of paying this off within 24 months as you like, and you're not locked into any sort of contract. So that is it. That's all I have to share with you in this video, comparing these two phones two years apart. 800 pounds from eBay, 1000 pounds from Samsung for the new one, or 250 pounds for the old one, Prion Mini. Make up your mind, they're both damn good phones. Just work with your budget, make a decision. Everything else, benchmarks, performance figures, processors, is pretty much irrelevant because who's doing 3D computational doodah on a phone? No one's gonna be doing serious gaming on a phone. It is all right if you don't have a console, but if you don't have a console and you're gonna be gaming on a phone, then why would you be spending eight, 900 pounds on a phone? You could buy a damn PlayStation and a cheaper phone and you can game for real. So this gaming thing has gone a bit silly, but some of the features on these new phones are great. Not this one, maybe the ROG phone too, which I'm still kind of excited about. I think I've mentioned it a few times and maybe we'll see it on the channel soon. So if you wanna see some of this content coming up, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you give me a like, if you got anything to talk to me about, talk to me in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Perfect.